right here with reaction to all of today's breaking news. He's the host of the number one show, Sunday nights, 10 Eastern, Life, Liberty, Levin, right here on the Fox News Channel, host of CRTV's Levin TV. We call him the great one for a reason, Mark Levin. All right, Mark, I mean, there are some lessons here. I, I agree that you shouldn't lie to the FBI. Everyone agrees with that. I also agree that you should pay your taxes. I also agree that you better not lie in a bank loan application. Mark, um, how did we get from Russia and that this is it after nearly, yeah. we're almost at 500 days. All right, I want to address Michael Cohen. How did we get to that? I want to help the law professors, the constitutional experts, the criminal defense lawyers, the former prosecutors, and of course the professors. I want to help them understand what the law is. The general counsel for the Clinton mob family, Lanny Davis, he had his client plead to two counts of criminality that don't exist. These campaign finance violations that all over TV, they're saying, implicates the president of the United States directly. First, let's back up. It is a guilty plea. It is a plea bargain between a prosecutor and a criminal. A criminal who doesn't want to spend the rest of his life in prison. That is not precedent. That applies only to that specific case. Nobody cites plea bargains for precedent. That's number one. Number two, just because a prosecutor says that somebody violated a campaign law doesn't make it so. He's not the judge. He's not the jury. We didn't adjudicate anything. It never went to court. That's number two. A campaign expenditure under our federal uh, campaign laws is an expenditure solely for campaign activity. A candidate who spends his own money or even corporate money for an event that occurred not as a result of the campaign, it is not a campaign expenditure. Let me give a few examples to help people understand this, especially the American people. Let's say, I wrote these down, let's say a candidate had said, we owe vendors a whole lot of money. We've had disputes with them, but I want you to go ahead and pay them. I'm a candidate. I don't want all this negative publicity. So he says to his private lawyer, you pay them. I'll reimburse you. Get it done. Is that illegal? It's perfectly legal. Yet according to the prosecution of the Southern District of New York, it's paid at the direction of the candidate to influence an election. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor, how stupid is your point? It's not a crime. More. Let's say yeah, this candidate settles a lawsuit that was initiated before he becomes a, uh, a candidate, and he says to his, his personal lawyer, I want you to pay settle that lawsuit, you can use my corporate funds, my private funds, whatever it is, that is perfectly legal too. The prosecutor would say, but that influenced the election. So what? There are certain things you do that influence an election that are legal, certain things you do that influence an election that are Ill illegal. Let's say a candidate uh, gets a non-disclosure agreement from a disgruntled employee, he wants to quiet that disgruntled employee as he goes into the election, he pays the funds out of his pocket or through his corporation, Perfectly legal. Nothing here was spent out of the campaign. Nothing was done with the campaign or to the campaign. This is exactly what the federal law is. And Mr. Lanny Davis had his client plead guilty to two offenses that aren't offenses, that the prosecutor insisted were offenses. That's why he's no good. That is Michael Cohen against Donald Trump. Donald Trump's in the clear. Let's say Donald Trump even directed Michael Cohen to make payments in non-disclosure agreements. So what? He's allowed to do that. Now, here's my question. Has the Southern District of New York ever paid money in a non-disclosure agreement with any of its employees? How about any U.S. Attorney's Office in the United States? How about the Department of Justice? How about any business? How about, How about any union? How about the DNC? How about members of Congress? It's done all the time. But call it hush money. And all of us, hush money, oh, they can't pay hush money. Well, it is hush money, it's legal, it's a contract, it's done all the time. Now, what does Mr. Mueller have left? It's worth, he's chasing the Manhattan madam. Who the hell's the Manhattan madam? I don't know. You know, he's interviewing, he's dragging her in front of the grand jury. What's next? The Manhattan madam, he's got, uh, he's got Manafort where he wants him on, on banking charges. Uh, he set up a few guys like Flynn, who's gotten in trouble. Now they have Cohen. What do they have? They have nothing. I'll tell you what they have. Mr. Mueller, as a federal prosecutor, is preparing his impeachment report 
which is an unconstitutional activity, Mr. Mueller is supposed to be non-political. He's not supposed to be preparing impeachment reports. Mr. Mueller, I told you before, you can't indict a sitting president. I told you that 15 months ago. Now you figured it out. You and Rosenstein figured it out. Now you and Rosenstein are trying to figure out what to do with the subpoena. You see, Sean, Giuliani was on your show the other day or somebody's show. He said, why do they take two or three weeks? I'll tell you why they take two or three weeks. Because Mr. Mueller has to consult Mr. Rosenstein, his boss, to figure out what to do with this subpoena. I'll tell you what happens when they issue that subpoena. The President of the United States takes it all the way to the Supreme Court, and what does he cite? Department of Justice memos. What else does he cite? The Constitution of the United States. So this is going to be an impeachment battle in the end. The President of the United States, if he doesn't get involved in the uh, perjury trap, think about that. They don't have a crime. He needs this interview to create a crime against the President of the United States, this prosecutor. Well, that's pretty damn outrageous. So in any event, I want the news media to understand, you know what took place in the Southern District of New York? Nothing that matters. Zippo. You know, Mark, there was no violation of federal campaign laws. Lanny Davis blew it. Lanny Davis, Lanny Davis, he puts out a tweet today. Today, Cohen stood up and testified under oath that Donald Trump directed him to commit a crime. You're a dummy, Lanny. By making payments to two women for the principal purpose of influencing an election. If those payments were a crime for Michael Cohen, then why would they be a crime for Donald Trump? They weren't a crime for Michael Cohen. He screwed himself. And they're not a crime for Donald Trump either. Now move along and go back into your corner with Hillary Clinton. But, well, obviously, he's a huge Clinton sycophant. Um, so this 2016 campaign, we're, what, 77 days out, is now becoming, as I have said for a long time, it's about impeachment, keeping Obamacare, them wanting their crumbs back, eliminating ICE, open borders, and stopping the investigation into what I say is the biggest abuse of power. Here's what I want to ask you. So we now have Hillary Rodham Clinton obstructing, violating the Espionage Act, no indictment. We now have her paying for what turns out to be a, a foreign entity, a foreign agent, putting together Russian lies that are disseminated to the American people to influence an election, lies, never verified, never corroborated, then put as the bulk of information in four FISA warrants. Comey, Sally Yates, Rod Rosenstein, they all signed right. off and they all said, they swore, they put their, their good name and credibility behind it. I don't see Comey right. indicted. I don't see any, I don't see any Hillary Clinton indictments. I don't see any crimes that are being pursued here. Barack Obama had, what, $2 million in campaign finance violations. He just paid a right, fine. Can I, can I interrupt for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Interrupt on my own show. The head of the FBI is not the head of the FBI anymore. He's a confessed leaker and he's under investigation by the inspector general. The deputy FBI director uh, was fired and is under criminal investigation. Mr. Stroke, who was the head counterintelligence investigator, was fired and he's under investigation, I believe, or will be, or should be, under investigation as well. That's the top tier of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I've never heard of anything like this before. You have a mole in the deputy attorney general's office who's working with Stroke, who's been fired. His wife works for uh, the Fusion GPS, no, pushing out the yeah. opposition research against the president of the United States, getting it in front of the FISA court through the FBI. Bruce Orr, Bruce Orr, who served for the deputy attorney general of the United States. And there's, there's tons more. You have FISA court judges that have never been held to account. Fraud. You had an application that was filed with the FISA court. They didn't say who paid for the opposition research that was used. To, to violate their rules. I gotta run, Mark. Yeah, we need a special counsel now for that. You know, some great, smart constitutional lawyer once wrote a book, and in the book he said, This is a post constitutional America. Oh, that was you. We're there.